on our shows. You know, Scott and I have been digging deeper into the state's new Safety Act. It takes effect on January 1st. So this morning, our special guest is Cook County Public Defender Sharon Mitchell. He joined us last hour to talk about who benefits from the law. But this hour, we want to talk about those who are in jail, because once the law takes effect in January, there will be a lot of people looking for release. So first, good morning again. Thank you for sticking yeah. around. And I think this is where a lot of people have pause about the Safety Act, because the fears are that the system is going to be overrun with an influx of people who want out fast. We're talking about bond hearings. They move quickly. Mistakes can be made. What do you want people to know? Yeah, I think that's one of the benefits of the new changes. There are so many cases that are in the system, and because of the number of cases, folks have to kind of move fast, and that's how mistakes happen. The, the new system allows for us to really focus in on the cases that are um, that we want to focus on, and it gives prosecutors and defense attorneys and judges uh, enough time to really make these serious decisions. Um, go ahead. No, uh, the people who are in jail, they, were, they are going to currently have their cases before these hearings. How is it going to work? It's a two-step process. And do you have enough people to do this? Are you ready to go? Yeah, well, to, to take the second question first, we are. You know, this law got passed or got signed in January of 20, 2021. And while some folks were kind of dawdling or filing frivolous lawsuits, uh, folks that were serious really took the time to prepare for this change. So at the Cook County Public Defender's Office, we have been working with st stakeholders to really get prepared for this. Uh, we believe that we will have, we know that we will be prepared to take this on. Uh, with that said, there is a two-step process. And what happens with that two-step process is that cases come into the system like they do now, and there is an initial appearance. If a prosecutor decides that they want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, detain that person, then there is a special hearing. And in that special hearing, we have the time, the actors in court, to really make those serious arguments about whether somebody should be detained and not detained and not worried about all the kind of speed having to do with, you know, having all of these cases in the system. And then it goes before a judge. Yes, yeah, so the judge is still the person that's making a decision. Now, you know, before January 1st is the judge that's making the decision, and after January 1st is the judge that's making the decision. It's just a new law that they're kind of using to make those decisions. So I don't need to tell you crime is top of mind so many for so many Chicagoans yeah. in the city in particular these yeah. days. When we talk about this process and we hear the words assembly line, I think people get really nervous. You say this is a holistic approach. What does that mean when we're talking about this legally? Yeah, so first when we talk about assembly line, that's what we have now. Right. We have an assembly line based system where people kind of flow through uh, bond court very quickly. When we talk about a holistic uh, decision making process, we're talking about that, the decision making process. Too often these decisions are made too quickly and too often these decisions are made based upon somebody's access to money. The new system gives us the ability uh, to really make arguments on both sides and better prepare judges to make a correct decision as opposed to the status quo where these decisions are often made based upon how much money somebody has in their pocket. Okay, so a lot of critics are saying, you know, w w if people are out back on the streets, they're a danger to the public. They could go and intimidate the witnesses. They could go and create more problems and break the law. What happens if they do that? Well, the same thing that happens now. There's a warrant issue and the sheriff goes out to get them. I think when we're talking about this system, it's always important to know what happens right now. And what happens right now is that people have the opportunity uh, to kind of buy their way out of jail. Um, and I think that this is a new process, and this process allows us to make those better decisions. But if somebody uh, is uh, accused of violating their, violating their release, then a warrant is issued and the prosecutor gets an opportunity to make an argument that, that person should stay in jail. We cover a lot of crime stories here on Good Day Chicago and often it's a case of recidivists, repeat offenders. One of the things that's troubling a lot of people about the Safety Act is that in court, past history of not showing up in court can't be talked about. That's a concern. To that you say what? That's not true. It's um, not true. It's not true. Prosecutors will have the ability to argue that a person is a risk of willful flight from prosecution. Um, unfortunately, there's been lots of misinformation about the Safety Act. It is a complicated law. Uh, it is a law that sometimes people have based their opinion on, what, on who passed it as opposed to what's actually in the law. Um, so. 
Yeah, well, I think we are. I had one more question, but I think we're running out of time right I'm sorry. now. No, 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 it's not your fault. This is there was this was a law that has 764 pages. There is a lot to unpack. You have done an excellent job of explaining to our viewers exactly how this falls from your perspective, and we appreciate the time coming on here, Sharon Mitchell. Well, I appreciate the coffee. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate we're glad it. that you were able to get up early. <laughs>